Fred McNeil, and thank you for watching QAC TV 7. We've started a great new show. It's called Senior Moments, and this is for all the old guys and gals out there. We're on every week and tell you about some things that are going to make your life easier. Now, as you know, one of my favorite uh, things to talk about is physical activity. I was a phys ed teacher and a health teacher. I'm pleased to have Helen Spinelli. Helen, thank you for being here. Thank you, Fred. Helen, as you know, works for the county. And you probably didn't know that Helen teaches a whole series of courses for the Y and other people on physical things. And I tell you what, Helen, I've been going to your yoga class for about two years now. Mm -hmm. You've improved my golf game through <laughs> yoga. You've improved my back. And my wife said, you've also improved my mind. So you must be doing something right. So look, at, I'm not going to talk a lot, but I'm gonna, before we start, I want to share this with the audience and you and I talked about. Here's a terrible statistic. By the age of 75, about one in three men and about one in two women, so that's a third of the guys and half the women, don't do any physical activity. And we know that's the opposite of what they should be doing. I mean, as the body ages, our skeleton muscles, our cardiovascular strength, not to mention what goes on up here, and they need to be stimulated. So, look at you saved my life. You get my, you get my, tell seniors, don't worry about the weights. If you want to do that, that's fine. If you want to run, jog, bike, that's all good. But you've got, I think, a secret formula that can help you at yoga. Go ahead and tell us about it. Well, what's really important about yoga, and, and, and I've been teaching now for 19 years, um, and I taught um, at the community center and Price and um, other places, but um, I've been at the Y for nine years. But what's really important is, is kind of the fundamentals of your well-being is, is um, it's strength building, so you use your own body for the right. strength. It's balance, which is really important, especially which we tend to lose yes. at about sixty-five plus. Yes, um, what, but the whole foundation is on breathing. Okay. And so um, I read when I was first starting that every person needs to take seven hundred and fifty deep breaths a day mm. in order to reoxygenate. Nate, your blood. Get the oxygen yeah. flowing. So I think we do 750 during the class. <laughs> <laughs> so. Well, then, and, and Helen, let me just interrupt just for a second. Sure. For everyone, know, you don't have to go out and buy a $150 pair of Nike shoes. Mm -hmm. You don't have to get a brand new sweat outfit. You just have to become with comfortable clothes, and then we'll go from there. So don't panic about, do I have to buy? No, and you can borrow the mat. You don't even have to buy a yoga mat, right? right? It's, yeah, mat. there's not a lot of gear involved. No, and no. and um, in fact, you can do yoga at home, and you can do it in a chair. So um, I recently, and I have a good story, because I also I teach in Denton uh, at the Y and in Centerville at the Y, and um, I recently had a gentleman come in with his two daughters, and he was 72, mm. and he literally could not sit down on the mat. I had to help him mm. sit down on the mat. Uh. Um, that was in January. Um, now he's completely doing all, he's down so on the mat. So he get up and down, which is the hardest the hard, thing, yes. Right, so he's up and down on the mat, and he's like, I, t I told him he's become a regular because what happens is he comes and he says he, he can't give it up because it's improved his uh, mobility, flexibility and his mobility. flexibility, but also, um, um, and I'll, let me explain briefly sure. the class. Sure. The class mm -hmm. is Hatha Yoga, and Hatha is the basis of all yoga, uh, foundation yoga. And um, we do, um, I like to call, talk about the four paths of yoga. The first path is that breathing path okay. where you breathe. And Helen, we just talk about relax. Well, you breathe, breathe in through your nose. Okay. And what's different is you don't breathe in your um, chest uh, upper cavity. chest, right. you breathe in your belly. Okay. So it's, it's a diaphragmatic breath, really they call it a yogic breath. So what happens, you breathe in and your tummy expands, okay. and then you hold, and then you use those abdominal muscles to push your diaphragm, and you release your breath through your mouth with your pursed lips. So it's a breathe in, hold, and then release using those muscles. And the nice thing when you're in a class, you can hear it. When there was 10 yeah. people in the class, <laughs> it, it sounded like whales coming up for air. <laughs> yes. 
So anyway, and then uh, the second path are, are what's called the asanas, mm -hmm. but really what they are are stretches. So you breathe into the stretches. The third path that I like. And that's right, just so static stretching all of us runners used to do and just stretching the muscles. Yeah, no the bouncing. Skin. Right, we, just we stretching. We do, a, a, do a, a long stretch and a, the stretch can last from a half a minute to a minute okay. to actually longer depending. And then the third path is what I call um, it's meditation, but I think of yoga as meditation in motion. So we're, the type of yoga that I was taught was Sharopa, and it's really very contemplative. So most of the time we have our eyes closed, and, and that, you know what, that actually, it stops the friction yeah. of your mind. Because you're, I tell you what, I think that one of the things I really like about your class, when you start at the beginning, the eyes close, and they don't open again until we're standing up, and they don't close them again. So you're in your own little area. You're not worried and, about anybody and, else. And that's what I really like, because you don't, yeah. can't figure out where to place your eyes. Yeah. You don't want to look at someone else because that's uncomfortable. So being in your own space and then you don't worry about whether you do someone else's sure. posture, they do it better, whatever. And then the fourth path is spirit. Let me just, before you turn the fourth, and the nice thing for all the seniors out there, people aren't looking at you. So you don't have to worry about, oh, do I look funny? No, their eyes are closed, so don't worry about it. I'm sorry, the That's path. perfect, I hadn't yeah. thought about that. Yeah. And then the fourth path is spiritual. Mm -hmm. Yoga is based on a whole set of doctrines called sutras. Okay. And the sutras are yamas and niyamas, but they're very, very compatible with Western beliefs. Sometimes at the end of class, I read from meditations from the mat, and they talk about being truthful to yourself to others, treating others as you want to be Just treated. Just pleasant thoughts. Yeah, and so um, those are important. So the class is gentle stretching, a more active phase of standing postures, relaxation and guided meditation. And everything we do before the relaxation and guided meditation gets you to that phase of relaxation. Just yeah. And guys, look, here's a message to the guys. Please do. Look, <laughs> I've been in it for two years. It's not a girly thing. And come on, this is 2019. Let's get rid of the guys. If you play golf, if you sit down in a lounge chair, your lower back hurts, it's going to make your life easier. And in the class, they're co-ed, and there's no threat to the alpha males out there, okay? Yeah, <laughs> no, I think it's important. Yeah. Um, and I, I do have lots of men in my classes. Um, and I also, what I really like is that most of the time the yoga has um, at the Y has posted family yoga. Right. So I have mothers coming with children, with their sons. And it all and blends daughters. in perfectly, doesn't Yeah. It? And most of the time what's really helpful and what I've heard from the moms is that um, it helps their, their children calm themselves, sure. you know, and sometimes when they first come in, I've had three-year-olds and five-year-olds, they're kind of wanting attention and then all of a sudden they realize that this is not, they're not going to get attention and their moms yeah. are into it and they just go with the they flow. They mellow out. They mellow they, out. They just totally mellow out and it's really, really, um, it's, it's, it's a wonderful thing to do with your family, with your children, your grandchildren, sure. whatever it is. And the, and the nice thing is how, uh, it doesn't matter, your eyes are closed and it doesn't matter if the three-year-old can't get in a certain posture. Oh, no, it or doesn't. Or the 70-year-old, because you know what? You know some of the stretching things you do at 72, I just can't do. I'm sorry, I just can't. But I can do my own adapted version right. of that. And you know what? There's as much stretching going on and as much physical and mental activity as if the person, I mean, some of the people in your class kill me. They I can, I think they can bend themselves like a pretzel. Yeah. But you well, don't have to. You don't have to. And that's, I think, what I usually said at the beginning of a class and, and to a a lot of people is leave your ambition at the door because sure. this is not a competition no, it's not no. something it's something that's really you gauge with yourself it's how well you're going to do and how you feel and it's really about how you feel <laughs> there yeah. there are um, certainly alignments people can do and what I have found is I don't usually align people. Some yoga teachers do. A so lot what do you of, mean by align people? So if you're in a posture, you'll come over and say they'll move a leg oh, okay. or they'll move this. I don't do that because A, a lot of people are uncomfortable with sure. being handled. Sure. Um, and B, is that I usually find that people as they go through the class and if they come back, they find the alignment because sure. they'll keep checking my postures and then they'll be able to do it and they just keep finding it so
So you can do your own thing. Okay? Yeah. Well, I mean, I give very detailed verbal um, instructions. instructions. I say, you know, bring your um, knee behind your wrist. Okay. Um, and that's to make it more comfortable. Comfortable, and get right? Stretch. And and also to get into the posture to breathe you know, to um, arch your back or to lift your shoulders up and relax sure. them back, have your chin level, all those things. Um, You're guiding them through so the comfort. Right, and it's always verbal, okay. you know. Now, Helen, let me know, before we get to the actual demonstration, we're gonna do some yoga right here. Another thing that always concerns me, and that's that the guys in the word, she's trying to try to convert me to Buddhism. And she, <laughs> that's guys, a good point. It's not a religious class. It's a class for the body and the mind. Right. Is, that, is that a fair statement? Yeah, yeah, it is. And at the end of class, um, we talk about, you know, I talk about relaxation. We do what I call a guided meditation where um, we ask you to relax all the points in your body that you know, your eyes and your mouth and your back, and we go through that. And then we have a period of, of silence where you usually are in a very wonderful space. Just, it's like being in a hot tub. I compare, I say, she says, what you, Elaine, the last five minutes you're like in a hot bathtub. And it's just like, you go, oh, that relief. And it's because you did all the stretches yes. before because your muscles are stretched and you're, by stretching your muscles, you relax them. Sure. You know, there's the tension of the stretch and then when you bring your muscles back, you relax and you get a level of relaxation that you can't get unless you do the stretches ahead oh, yeah. of time. Now, Helen, we can talk all day, but George will panic on the other side of the glass. So tell me, okay, show some people some easy sure. things seniors can do at home. Yeah. So and feel free to join us. Yeah. Yeah. So you can, it's good to get in. I'm going to just do some chair yoga. Sure. So you just um, get a nice chair that's um, not like these moving. <laughs> <laughs> but you want your feet flat on the ground and you want them um, like hip distance apart. And one of the easiest stretches for low back pain is to just come all the way down, drop your head, and just hang there. And you should start with at least a minute, but probably work up to about three minutes. And then it's really important to have your bottom as back far and the chair you're, you're at your knee. You're yeah. Stretching. So you get a stretch. And what's really important too is to breathe. So when we come out of that. And then when you come out, you always come out slow, slowly. Right? Slowly. So you also can do these. This is a really good stretch again for your back. This is a series of stretches that's called the Magic Four, and they're really um, intended. I'm only going to do three of them today, but the Magic Four really are um, intended to relieve lower back pain, which is a real chronic problem with Americans. One of the reasons it's a problem with Americans is because we sit in chairs yeah, too much. Yeah. So. Asians don't, and they don't have the back problem. So, so your left foot is flat or your right foot is flat on the ground. You bring your ankle onto your thigh. And what I want you to do is let your arms relax and just slowly bend forward and breathe. Breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth. Drop your head down. And again, you should hold this for about a minute and then work up to longer. You're gonna feel this in your thigh and your lower back. And it's really important to breathe. Sometimes when we do exercise, especially if it's a little bit um, uh, stressful, is that we go ahead and we um, hold our breath. So we should not do that. Sure. So breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth and then come back up. I'm going to have to cough. It's okay. You can cough. Coughing is okay. So while you're coughing, make sure I congratulate you. You're retiring, I guess, kind of officially July 1, but the process will start earlier, okay? Yes. Yeah, right. no, it will. I choke a lot of people up in this show. So. Yeah, you do. <laughs> Sorry about that. So, I, yeah. Um, so, we can do the other side. So, your right foot is flat. Put your left ankle on your... Th on your thigh, you can put it up as high as you want. Um, the higher you go, the less you're going to be able to come forward. So, but you can work up to that, and then again come forward and drop your head down and hold it. There's no bouncing, um, as as uh, Fred mentioned before. It's really a long stretch for your muscles. Take a deep breath in, and as you release your breath, come back up. 
And they can just do this kitchen, watching TV, at work, right. anyway. Yeah, right. it's easy. It's so the other one is, is I really do a lot of stretches that have to do with twisting because um, supporting the muscles around your spine is very important. And it's not something that we do no. in a normal day. I usually ask my students to go ahead and um, when they're in their car and they're um, going to pass or going to turn, that instead of just turning your head, that you turn your whole, whole body. body. And that's a wonderful yoga stretch, but we're going to do that in the chair and we're going to turn, put your hand on the, um, on the back of the chair and come all the way around. Usually start with your um, waist and then bring your shoulders all the way around. Your feet are flat on the ground, your chin is level and you're breathing. And eyes closed and easy breathing make it so much nicer. Yeah. And then you take a deep breath in. And as you release your breath, you come back. And then we're gonna do another one on the other side. I'm gonna bring it back. Um, you should always do, so your feet are flat, you're twisting from your waist, bring your shoulders all the way around. Your chin is level and you're breathing. And as you release your breath, come back. Very good. So we do, um, we do about an hour of yoga. We do a lot of different stretches. There are many, many. I have a book at home that has um, 2,100 mm. yoga poses. So um, we incorporate them into a series so that there's a flow to the class. And we also do some. And you build up. I mean, we start out, I mean, everyone is always worried about what are we going to do? Well, like you're saying, and we start out slow. I mean, mm -hmm. we're basically seated when we start out, mm -hmm. legs crossed, and just doing things like twisting our Yeah, that that's another one. That's a good one. Rotating so we take that, our yeah. hand and yeah. we place it on the left side of your head and then gently bring your head towards the right. And then you're breathing. And you might have noticed we always do both sides. It's, it's very important to do both sides. Okay. It doesn't matter which side you do first as long as you do both sides. And this really helps to stretch your neck. I don't know if people get, a lot of people get oh, um, sore lower, necks lower, and shoulders. Yeah, and upper back. Like and the, yeah, yeah. Um, the other thing that I really like to stress, and it's good for everyone, no matter what age you are, is to improve your posture. So one of the things that they say that you should be doing is, is not sitting back on your chair, okay. sitting up. Sitting helps to support your back. But one of the things I've learned about improving your posture is lifting your shoulders up and rolling them back. It helps your spine line up. Keeps it lined up. Yeah, and it's, um, we do that many times during class during just class. to remind people. And if you come to class and what happens is that a lot of these, these keys and cues become part of your life. Um, and you, and you can, just naturally do them. Yeah. The breathing and the posture. And like you said, you can sit, hey, I'm sitting now. I might as well just rotate a little bit. Yeah, exactly. So you can incorporate them into your life if you miss a class. Um, since most of my classes is formulated on the same series of right. stretches, I, I vary it some. But um, so you, if, you, if you come, you can then do it yourself. A lot of my students, um, I give them the, the four magic poses. And they just do it on their own? At home, right. Okay. You can just right. do it at home. And it's really important for, um, <clears throat> I think, I started doing it 20 years ago, but my mom did it. And okay. so, so it was there. You just yeah. saw models. Well, well, my mom did it, but of course it wasn't cool when I was a teenager no, no. that my mom did it on the beach. Now you realize why your mom was doing it. <laughs> yeah, it well, but my mom, she, she lived till she was in her 90s. Oh, she was wow. totally fit. And, the fountain and, of youth out there. Okay. Yeah, and, and she was also a phys ed teacher. Oh, good for her. <laughs> Helen, my time's about up. All right, good. look at We thank you. And look at for everybody. Uh, Helen's available through the different f places she does it. Yoga at any site is terrific. Absolutely. And please. Don't be one of those one third of the women and 50% of the men over 70 who are doing nothing. And the nice thing about yoga, like I said, you don't have to spend a penny to start. No. You don't, you don't sweat that hard. You're just stretching and it makes you feel good. Well, Helen, enjoy retirement. Thank you. I want you to get rid of your cold. I know, okay, I'm, almost, right? I'm almost done. And you're off to Hawaii soon. Yeah. Oh, you got <laughs> it made, you're batting a thousand. Well, look at my time's up. Thanks a lot for your time. All right, thank you for watching QAC TV 7. We're gonna see you next week for Senior Moments. We're gonna have somebody from the Queen Anne's County Department of Aging. Okay, thank you very much.